What is up my friend? Today I'm going to show you a new animation technique utilizing the power of AI technology. Now this is a very complex way to get a video to video animation. And out of all the methods I've seen thus far, the results are by far the cleanest and most consistent. For this method, I'm going to be using Stable Diffusion with the automatic 1111 user interface, EB Synth, Premiere Pro, and Topaz Video AI. As some of these softwares are not free to use, you can also do this method for free using DaVinci Resolve. Now, other than that, all you'll need is a video to begin. Now, I would recommend keeping it short and at a one-to-one -one aspect ratio. Now that we have that out of the way, let's jump right in. Alright, first we need a video. So I clicked on the wrong fucking. So I have <laughs> really did me dirty on the th <laughs> pre selected thumbnail there, but this is what I got. Do you want to know something? I have always wanted to be an elf man. To keep things simple, I made my video the one to one aspect ratio. I would recommend using the same parameters, a one to one aspect ratio. So you want a square and then make it 512 by 512 for this method to really work especially if you have a video card with low vram i have my video here now we are going to need to split this video into a bunch of frames to work with so i will show you two ways so i'm going to use premiere pro for the first method this is my preferred method personally so we're going to select the video of me with my gaping mouth and then once it's loaded in go to sequence sequence settings and again we need this at a 512 by 512 or else it's going to take a lot of computational resources to actually work on the animation so once it does that it's going to make my nose even bigger then just go to effect controls and then just fit to frame about right right yeah <laughs> yeah right there so go to export and then make sure you change your source file that you want the frames to export in make sure the format is in png then for the file name i'm going to do tie and then i'm going to do an underscore so that way it'll name every frame in numerical order three digits and then export and now your source frames should look like this what if you don't have premiere pro well you can just go over to our trusty website easy gif and then they have a video resizer so we can just plug our source video into this upload it then we will get some something it broke so then we just go to our trusty video candy and upload the source video here and my internet is fucked so once you have it uploaded just set the dimensions to 512 by 512 voila and export and just download it now we are ready to break this down into frames in the description online converter video to jpeg so you just choose file and then yeah just drop in your source video and then just click convert and then once it is completed you just download it and it will come in a zip file so now you have all your beautiful frames right there then you can just extract this to whatever folder you want all right and just like that we are ready to generate right no, we're not. So the next step is to pick out keyframes and pack it into a sprite sheet. Some of you may be wondering what the fuck that even is. This is a sprite sheet. It's like a tiled image, essentially. So we're going to be using the free sprite sheet packer. Again, the link is in the description. So within this folder, I'm going to create a new folder called source frames. And now we're going to put all of those frames into this folder. And now we're going to make another folder and we're going to name this one keyframes. So now we're going to pick images for our sprite sheet as our keyframes. And we want the keyframes to be frames that show a lot of differi differenti differentiation. I think that's a word. We're going to use the first frame. So the best way to do it, if you don't know, is to hold control and click. So I like so that one. Let's do 30 and do one with my head turned. So the reason I'm doing this one is because my head is turned. And then let's do one where my eyes are looking at the viewer while my head is turned. So we'll do 46. Then we'll do one while my head is slightly turned and my mouth is open. So we'll do that one. For, for this video that's showing somewhere on the screen, I used 
four keyframes. But for this video, since it's a bit longer and I have more movement, I'm thinking about doing anywhere from six to eight. Let's see how many frames we have. So I'll do either six or eight, just so they fit on the sprite sheet evenly. So I have one, two, three, four, five, that classic one, six, do seven, and eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Might need nine. Let's just do nine. So let's do one where my mouth is still kind of, I guess that one should work. So we'll do that one. That way we have nine. So I'm gonna do nine keyframes. You can do four. It's probably easier with four. I actually haven't done it with nine, but I know it's possible. Feeling a bit risky. So then we're just going to copy those, Control C or Command C, and then we're just going to paste those in the keyframes folder. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Why do I have 10? Do I know how to count? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, I have 10 frames. So I'm gonna get rid of this one because it's I, almost identical to that. I don't know what happened there, but. So for my sprite sheet, I'm gonna have three rows of three. So now go to the sprite sheet packer. Make sure you clear it because there's some weird art there initially. Make sure these settings are the same as mine. Just JSON hash, compact, zero padding, and Let's drag our images to the sprite sheet. So just like that, that should work pretty nicely. So hopefully you have an idea of where, what direction this is going. So now we're going to download this as a PNG. Then I'm just gonna add the sprite sheet to my tutorial folder. So if you're still following along, first off, congratulations. Now we can generate. So we're actually going to be doing this all in the text to image tab. Make sure you have control net. So load your sprite sheet into here. Make sure you enable it, pixel perfect. Go to line art for the control type. Go to realistic and then make sure the model is at line art. For the second control net, again, let's load in our sprite sheet. And this one I want to do open pose. This I have found to be very important to match the facial expressions that you make assuming you're doing video of yourself, if you're following along to this tutorial, but if you're not doing a face, you don't really, obviously you won't need this, but if you're doing a body, then yeah, you'll probably benefit from using open pose. Now for the last control net, this one is pretty optional. So again, load up our sprite sheet. This one, we're just going to use reference. Now, depending on the results you get, you can play with the control weight. So I'm gonna put mine at 0.5 because it's already going to use the line art, but I want it, I want it to get a lot of my, my skin tone. So I want it to like really look like me, but an elf, a dark elf, I guess, if you wanna label me. Someone's fire alarm is going off, so hopefully you can't hear that. Another optional thing that you can do is enable a detailer. So it makes the result of your face more proportionate. Again, if you're using a face for your reference, but for this tutorial, we're using a face. And then I like to use the open pose model in a detailer as well. And yeah, a lot, a lot going on, I know. Next, we want to set the image size parameters. So since my sprite sheet is three columns of 512 and three rows of 512, so I'm going to do some math. I'm going to need 1536, 1536, I think. Cool, and with those parameters set, all we need is a prompt. So for this, I'm going to use the Tyrant Prompt Generator because I want a high quality prompt in a matter of seconds. So I want a realistic elf man. Cool, and that, that looks good. So we're going to copy that and then we're going to paste it here. Since I'm using the Dream Shaper model as per usual, bad dream, fast negative V2, and now, we are ready to generate. And that looks pretty good. This took me a few iterations. This I can work with. And now I played with a detailer. I actually took a detailer off because it was making my face a little too soft looking. It was leaving out a lot of details. Then I also turned off the reference. So these are the results that I got. So depending on what you're looking for, I want a more detailed version of myself. But if you're looking for a more stylized version, then you can kind of go off of these previews here to get what you're looking for. But ideally, I have the line art and the open pose. These settings here, I have line art set to 0.85. Then I turned off, again, I turned off the A detailer. So we are now ready to cut these up and animate them. So now if you go to the description yet again, you will see the sprite cutter at easygift.com. So I added my sprite sheet to the folder that we're working with. You don't really have to, but I like to stay organized. So I'm just gonna drag this into here and then click the upload button. You can see it is now 
added here. So if you go to cutting method, I will do by tile size, and then we just want 512 by 512. Then PNG output format, and then cut. Now just make sure that your images look good. I've tried to use this option, the by number of columns slash rows, and it completely butchered it. Definitely recommend just using tile size. And when all looks good, just download the frames as a zip file. And now I'm going to create a new folder in our folder. I'm going to call this one AI keyframes. So now we can just extract these into our folder that we just created, then extract. So now we get to do the hardest part of this whole process. And that is renaming the keyframes to match up to the ones that we created. That way, EB Synth will know which order the frames will be animated in and where to apply the stylization. So just click on the frame, F2, copy, then go to the frame that matches that, F2, paste. Do this with all the frames and make sure you name them correctly. And make sure you rename the right frames. So now you just drag the file with all of the frames from the video that we chopped up, put that in the video section here and then for the keyframes we want to use the ones that we styled so the ai generated ones and then just put that in keyframes and now you should see something similar to this it should start from keyframe zero and end at the final frame in our sequence which for me is 238. So the default settings on this are pretty much what you want. I personally keep everything as is. The mapping essentially is how close you want it to follow the source video, which 10 is, like I said, very good. Deflicker, pretty self-explanatory. If you lower this to like a 0.2 or a 0.5, it's going to really, you're going to notice a lot of inconsistencies. So one or two is usually where you want to be. Then diversity, some people lower this. I personally keep it around 3,500. I don't really touch it. I'm not exactly sure what it does. I believe this makes it stray away from the source video a little bit. So yeah, I usually keep it default. No, no reason to play with that. And now we are ready to run all. So once we have all of that rendered, you should see something similar to this. You should have all these out folders with the rendered frames inside of them. And yikes. I noticed that the first couple frames in the first folder are actually scratch that every single frame in this first folder is pretty garbage. I'm just holding the directional key to scrub through all the frames. All right, so I noticed that in this first batch in this output folder, it was rendering zero to 100. So you want to keep the amount of frames that it's rendering per batch relatively small. That way, each keyframe that it's rendering it takes that keyframe and then applies that to the next sequence. So for example, it's taking the reference we have at zero, then it's applying that style to 29 frames. And it's much easier for the style to be applied to a smaller batch number because there's less movement going on as opposed to zero to 100 frames. So the reason that it was so destroyed is because it was, it was taking that one keyframe and applying the style to two frames that are very different from the source keyframe, if that makes sense. Hopefully that makes sense. So this is where we kind of have to nitpick certain spots in our animation and regenerate if need be. So let's open up Premiere Pro and get to the composition. All right, so how we're going to do this, you can go to File, Import, navigate to the file we want to import, and then click on the first one, and then make sure the image sequence is checked, and then open. So if you add in all of the clips as I have done now, one thing that will help you if you go to sequence, sequence settings, and under display format, change this to frames, you will be able to see the frames in the timeline. So for example, I have some inconsistencies here. So depending on your animation and how many keyframes you used, you may have some issues like I'm having. So first off, you can see like the eyes start to warp and that is because I did not use a keyframe like that. I had a keyframe where my head was turned but my eyes were in a different spot. So to keep this simple, instead of having to go in and regenerate all these frames, when I recorded this I should have kept in mind that I shouldn't have that much motion in because it's going to make me have to do more to get it really consistent. So I'm just going to trim off the beginning so it looks like this. This looks much better. We still have a lot of inconsistencies with the lighting, but as far as any deformations, this is passable. So one thing I can do to help alleviate some of this inconsistency with the light is throw on the source video 
and then just play with the opacity. Now this only helps out a little bit. So stuff like this is another reason why I love Topaz. So I think this looks good as far as composition goes. All my clips are layered just the way they should. So now we just need to fix this lighting issue. So I have it loaded into Topaz now. And this is where we're going to clean it up. So I'm going to upscale it to a 1024 by 1024. You can do an, a 60 FPS frame interpolation. Then to really clean up the lighting issue, we're going to use stabilization. Then we're going to apply jittery motion with one pass. And then we're just going to turn that strength all the way up. Now, sometimes this has a habit of blurring things out. So we're going to start at 100. And if it alters anything that we don't want, we're just going to kind of tone it down from there. Then we have the frame interpolation model, then the enhancement model as well. Then I'm going to export. This only takes a couple seconds. Now let's see what that looks like. I'm going to increase the stabilization to see if I can clean this up a little bit more because we're still getting the shiftiness from the lighting. So we're going to go to two passes. I'm going to go to, to 69 and then just going to preview that. See if this helped. It is a lot cleaner. Obviously, it's not going to make it perfect, but it definitely stabilizes it, makes it blend a little, a little bit better. There is a lot of movement in this video compared to my previous one. My first one was much easier to create and the result is a lot cleaner, but wanted to introduce a little bit more movement. So I don't think this turned out too bad at all. It saves so much time and resources. Topaz is definitely one of my favorite AI tools. So I actually reached out to Topaz to get an affiliate link because I love this tool and I want to help them out. So if you want to help me out and you're interested in buying this, my link is down below. So if you made it this far, congratulations. I hope you learned something. And if you want to stay up to date on all things generative AI art, I would definitely consider subscribing. And at the time of recording this, we just hit 1,000 subscribers. And if you're interested in joining the Tyrant Empire, private community focused on bettering themselves in all aspects, whether it be generative AI, fitness, mindset, business, check the link in the description below to join the Tyrant Empire for free. And with that said, my friends, I am out of here. Till next time, keep conquering.